Hello friends, we shall cover amino acid decimation technique today. This is another absolute dating method. This technique simply compares the changes in amino acid molecules to the time elapsed since they were formed. In some texts, this method may be listed under the relative dating category. But just like the obsidian hydration dating that we have discussed earlier, this method can provide both relative and absolute ages of objects. So let us find out how. The technique is based on the fact that amino acids which make up proteins present in all living things can exist in two mirror image forms. These mirror image forms are known as enantiomers. Now we already know that amino acids are the building blocks or subunits of proteins. All the biological tissues contain amino acids. This is also a fact that all amino acids except glycine which is the simplest one are all optically active. Now what does this optically active imply? Optically active compounds are those that can show optical isomerism. Do remember that two optically active isomers will rotate polarized light in opposite directions and they will be non superimposable mirror images of each other just like our left and right hands. So let us dig a little deeper. When an organic compound contains a carbon atom that is bonded to four different groups of atoms that particular carbon atom is known as a chiral carbon. This means that the molecule can have two different forms which have the same molecular and structural formula but different arrangements of atoms in space. Now if a beam of polarized light is passed through a separate sample of both isomers, one of them will rotate the beam to the left and the other will rotate the beam to right. Those rotating polarized light to the left are known as levoenantiomers and those rotating to the right are known as dextroenantiomers LND amino acids. With a few important exceptions, living organisms keep all the amino acids in L configuration. When an organism dies, control over the configuration of amino acids ceases and over a long period of time, all the amino acids undergo change called racemization and they become non-protein D amino acid. So here you can find this uh, textbook definition of racemization. It is a process in which optically active compounds are converted into an equal mixture of enantiomers with zero optical activity. The rate of racemization depends on the molecule and conditions such as pH and temperature. So after the death of an organism, the proportion of these D amino acids increases with time. However, the rate of racemization is temperature dependent and therefore likely to vary from site to site. So without knowing the rate of racemization of a particular place, it is not possible to determine the exact age of an object. This can be used as a relative dating method to compare the age of different objects found in a particular site when you don't know the rate of racemization. But by using radiocarbon dating technique on bone samples at a particular site and by measuring the relative proportions of uh, L and D isomers, one can establish what the local racemization rate is. This calibration is then used to date bone samples beyond the time range of radiocarbon. And since we have got the local racemization rate now, we can now establish the absolute date of an object. This is how amino acid racemization technique is both useful as a relative and absolute dating procedure. This is a very useful technique for comparative uh, dating method with great potential. But it introduces uh, some problems of calibration and requirement of an intimate knowledge of the paleo environmental uh, conditions of the bone deposition site. However, all methods have their own limitations and potentials, right? So this is all about amino acid decimation technique. So using a variety of methods, geologists are able to determine the age of geological materials to answer the question, how old the fossil is. Relative dating methods are used to describe a sequence of events. These methods use the principles of stratigraphy to place events recorded in rocks from oldest to youngest. On the other hand, absolute dating methods determine how much time has passed since rocks formed by measuring the radioactive decay of isotopes or the effects of radiation on the crystal structure of minerals. Here is a bird's eye view of absolute dating methods that we have discussed in this video series. You can simply pause this video and go through this table, just have a uh, revision of what we have discussed in this video series till date. In applying all these dating methods to a particular site, it is important to consider the purpose and limitation of each of these dating method. Depending upon the type of problem, accuracy required and the materials available for dating, we can decide what type of technique one should use for a particular place. All dating techniques have their merits and demerits. 
So it is quite essential to apply different dating methods for a particular object in order to cross check the results and to build a concrete chronology. Hope you have found this video series informative and uh, useful. This is the end of dating methods in archaeology. Do subscribe this channel if you like my videos. You can post your suggestions in the comment section below. Next I am planning to start Indian history series which would be helpful for graduate courses and uh, those preparing for civil service examinations as well.